Well, there you have it, Pac. We just finished this 40 by 80 wide span tubular structure out here in Weatherford, Texas. But before we move along with the final tour, let's go back in time and visit Blanca, our site manager. Let's see what her process was like during the site prep, during the concrete pour. And then we'll go visit myself back in time as well on day one install on this wide span. Again, it's 40 by 80. And then we'll have our final tour. So this will be a three part series video. Now, let's get this tour started. Welcome back, Pack. I'm Blanca. I'm the site coordinator at Wolf Steel Buildings, and we are today in Weatherford at our job site for our client who's doing a 40 by 80 structure. So when we first came out here to visit our client and his site, he had a certain placement that he wanted to sit the building and he had plans of doing a concrete approach connecting, if you see behind here, to his existing driveway. Um, so the building was originally going to be out there and the client didn't fully see the property before he purchased it. He's currently living in Hawaii and will be soon moving out to the Weatherford area. So one thing that he was definitely interested in was his three bay door building facing his home. But one factor he did not consider was the elevations. Now, uh, just from us standing at this point, we do see that it at a downward hill so once we started taking those elevations we did notice that it was going to be fairly steep and quite a bit of dirt work was going to be brought on so one option we did advise him was to reconsider and that segued us to move the building over to where it's currently being placed right now and the amount of dirt that would be needed to be brought in would be reduced after finalizing the four corners where the client wanted his building, we still made it a standard to double check the elevations so that we could assess the site and make sure we calculated the right amount of dirt. And in this case, we ended up needing about 17 and a half truckloads, which is equivalent to 175 truckloads. That is a lot of dirt. All right, crew, so now we're on the other side of the pad where you can really see the 24 inches coming into play and why we needed the 175 yards. You can see on the other side, we still have a mountain of dirt that we still need to bring in all the way around the pad to create that easy slope. Uh, so technically that's finishing the grade. Right now from this level, you can really see the 24 inches. On the opposite side, you really couldn't see from eye level how those 24 inches were coming into play, seeing the drop of the elevations. That eye level can sometimes be misleading, so please be mindful when you are taking into consideration where you're gonna put your building or your pad. But right now, the crew behind me, they are setting up the forms so we can get ready for concrete Blanca, so quick question. What would you say customers need to consider when they submit for a site visit? When our clients submit, one thing to consider is the placement of the building. If you have one or more locations that you're thinking of, let us know. That way we can go ahead and take advantage of our site visit to take the four corner elevations and be able to provide you those amounts of dirt if any dirt will be needed in those locations. That's a very, very big part of our site visit uh, job. And then uh, do you guys take into consideration like zoning and how far you guys need to be while you guys are also on the site visit? Absolutely. A lot of the time zoning does have certain requirements 
In this case, for example, the client had to be 20 feet away from his existing fence. So that's something we had to take into consideration when we were doing the elevations or taking the shots of the elevations. So one requirement is the setbacks. We have to also follow that through. So check in with your building department. Also your surveys do provide that information as well. All right, Pac, I hope you enjoyed Blanca's valuable information regarding site prep, site visits, orientation of your building. Hopefully that gives you an idea when your sales pack member are, are referring to site visits and site prep and whatnot. Uh, so now we just finished with Blanca. Let's go back in time again and visit myself on day one install. Let's get it. But we're out here on day one of an install. Last time we were out here, it was Blanca, our site manager. She was explaining the concrete process and how all that works before they pour. Now I'm back here trying to get you guys a little bit more details of, how, of what you can expect on day one install. Right behind me, the guys are working hard. They just arrived about an hour ago. They are running their base rail, they're running their chalk lines, and they're getting everything situated to square up the building. You can see these guys right behind me. Right now, I'll give you guys a little bit more details on what their trailer looks like, where they carry all the material. If you, if you already pulled the trigger on buying your metal building and you're kind of interested in what the process looks like on day one or the whole install, this video is perfect for you. So stick around, stay tuned, because we have an amazing video on day one install. Again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave some comments so we can help you create a better content channel regarding metal building. a 40 by 80 it is a wide span hopefully you can see on screen the trussing that's commercial trussing for these wide spans typically on day one the guys get out here and they start uh, squaring up the building with the base rail they start marking their holes for the anchors let me show you um, what I'm talking about here these guys are going straight at it it's really hot out here so these are the, each leg will contain four holes and it will have four anchors. And then right in between each leg, we'll add an additional anchor right here. Now, this building will have three overhead doors on the side. These are, uh, oh, actually it will have four overhead doors in total but it will have three on this side and one on the other side. These overhead doors are 10 by 10s. That's gonna look really neat, guys. This will, this will have a Quaker gray on the walls. The, it will have a black roof and the trim will be black. Hopefully on screen, you can see a little bit of the architectural plans on what this project can be in about two weeks with accessories. But we, sh we should be done with this project in about five days weather permitting so if you decide to go with the tubular building keep in keep in mind the timelines on the install of your of your building are way shorter than your typical red iron project now in this case it is a 40 by 80 it is a wide span so a little bit more of labor goes into place so this project will be completed in about well, i'd say about four to five days weather permitting now with the accessories and whatnot we do have four overhead doors my estimate would be this should be a total uh, of a three-week project scheduling the, the the overhead doors the gutters and downspouts he does have Quaker gray on the walls and he will have a black roof hopefully we can show you guys that later when they finish the building and we're, we'll explain that process but in the meantime let's check out the, the truck and trailer that these guys show up so if you pull the trigger on a tubular metal building, this is the trailer that will arrive on site. 
These are roughly about 30 to 35 long. It does come with an extension frame on the bottom if you do have longer panels. Hopefully uh, you're seeing on screen right now on how the trusses were placed on the trailer. They are, they are placed upside down. So when the SkyTrack comes, it has easier access to pick them up and take them to their designated spot. This is a gooseneck trailer. Most of these guys do count with a 3,500 ton truck, like a true Texan. I'm in my cowboy boots. <laughs> it's really hot out here. It's roughly about 102 degrees. These guys are still working on the base rail. That's typically the first process of erecting your building is to make sure they, have, they lay out everything. They, they shoot their elevation and then um, they square up the base rail to the concrete so we don't have any long-term problems on the erection process. And then on this side, we have the guys laying out the, the trussing. So what, the, what these guys are doing is that they're taking measurements to put their, for the, for the trussing. That way when they, they pick it up with the SkyTrack and they, get, they go on the pad, they start erecting, they start putting their legs and they'll have no complications during the process. And then we got the other crew, which is Eduardo's brother, Mr. Jaime, or Jimmy, or James. <laughs> uh, he's out there, he's uh, putting it together, strapping it up. These guys are doing, it's a process. We have two guys over there. They're, uh, like I said, they are installing the, these L brackets. These guys call them palomas, little L brackets. So that's what they're doing over there. And then they bring them to the next, next part of the process which they're installing diagonal legs. So we'll have those legs and then we'll lift them with the SkyTrack and then we'll start uh, laying them out one by one on the pad. Pretty interesting work, but again, Pack, we are lucky and fortunate enough, hopefully you can see on screen, that our client does have an open space. He does have a lot of land and that's, that uh, helps these guys create this process. Again, if, you don't, if your land is a little bit more minimized, we can still make it happen. It's just this open space makes it easier for everybody. Hopefully you guys can, uh, can visualize and now see what an install process looks like prior to erecting. It's a lot of, a lot of planning. It all, it all boils down to planning before erection, like we do at the office. We plan, we design, and then when it's, 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 it's time to go in the field, we execute. They just installed the legs on each side. It is 12 foot to the eaves. So on these wide, on these wide spans for the additional trussing, it is 12 feet to here. And then it's about 16 inches on the commercial trussing. So you have an additional, if my math is correct, uh, what is it, 13 foot six? Yeah, in total to the outside edge of the truss. And then hopefully you guys can see the L brackets that I was talking about. They go all across the trussing in order for the square tubing to be secured and installed. 